magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. I would like to uh, thank uh, the organizers of Sulong Pilipinas for this opportunity to discuss the country's fiscal performance and the ongoing reforms to improve and strengthen the country's public financial management amidst these challenging and uncertain times. Prior to the onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Philippines was one of the fastest growing emerging market economies in the region. In 2019, our economy grew by 6%, meeting the lower end of the Development Budget Coordination Committee's target of 6 to 6.5% for the year. The national government's disbursement performance likewise finished strong at 3.797.7 trillion, posting an 11.4% growth despite the delay in the approval of the 2019 budget. On the other hand, debt as a percentage of GDP continued to decline at 39.6% by the end of 2019 from 39.9% in 2018. It registered better than the program debt to GDP of 41.7% for 2019. This improved debt to GDP ratio can be attributed to the government's prudent cash and debt management supported by stable economic growth. In the early months of 2020, the Philippine economy was vibrant. However, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the government had to impose community quarantine restrictions to manage the increasing COVID cases. Due to the economic slowdown, total national government revenue collections in 2020 decreased to 2.856 trillion or 15.9% of GDP from 3.137 trillion or 16.1% of GDP in 2019. It is worthy to note, however, that the actual revenues exceeded the program by 336.2 billion or 13.3% as the economy gradually reopened during the second half of the year and collecting agencies performed better than expected. Higher non-tax revenues coming mainly from remittances of GOCC dividends were also recorded, which helped fund the government's COVID-19 response. Expectedly, driven by the COVID-19 emergency measures outlined in the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act, and the Bayanian to recover as one act. National government disbursement grew by 11.3% from 3.797 trillion in 2019 to 4.227 trillion in 2020. In particular, maintenance and other operating expenses or MOOE increased by 54.5% from 572.9 billion in 2019 to 885 billion in 2020. This is mainly due to the implementation of COVID-19 related programs, activities and projects, such as health emergency response efforts, including the procurement of test kits and personal protective equipment or PPS and hiring of additional job order personnel. Social amelioration program under the DSWD livelihood employment assistance programs to affected workers through the Department of Labor and Employment's COVID-19 Adjustment Measures Program or CAMP Tulong panghanap buhay sa ating disadvantaged or distressed workers or tupad program and abot kamay ang pagtulong or ACA program. Disbursements on infrastructure remain robust despite the challenges posed by the pandemic. On the whole, 
the infrastructure program funded by the national government for the year total to 869.5 billion. This is 84 billion or roughly 10.7% higher than the revised 785.5 billion program when the infrastructure components of subsidy and equity to GOCCs and transfers to local government units are accounted for and reckoned with. This is equivalent to a sizable 4.8% of GDP as compared to 4.2% program for 2020 and 5.4% realized in 2019. The relatively solid infrastructure disbursement performance is attributed to the efforts of the departments of public works and highways and transportation to accelerate disbursements and implement projects, health protocols, as well as measures of the economic development cluster to ensure timely implementation of the same. The following programs have been supported by the country's infrastructure spending, road construction and improvement, bridge construction works, bridge repair, and bridge retrofitting, flood control projects, local infrastructure projects, convergence programs with several government agencies, namely farm to market roads, school buildings, tourism road projects, access roads to airports and seaports, and evacuation centers and others. We also have the local government support funds and irrigation projects and housing programs. Given the lower revenue collections and increased spending due to the economic impact of the pandemic, the government's deficit level for 2020 has been expanded. The full year fiscal deficit for 2020 registered at 1.371 trillion, equivalent to 7.6% of GDP. This was a necessary policy response that the government undertook to minimize the social economic impact of the health crisis through the substantial increase in social services expenditures and cognizant of the role of public spending as main economic growth driver during the year. Nevertheless, the administration's prudent fiscal management puts us in a good fiscal position ahead of the pandemic. The economic team commits to pursue a fiscal consolidation strategy to keep the country's fiscal position within sustainable levels. For this year, we project the deficit to expand to 8.9% of GDP. Revenues, on the other hand, are expected to improve to 2.881 trillion, equivalent to 14.4% of GDP. The disbursement level for the year, amounting to 4.662 trillion, or 23.3% of GDP, will fund the government's efforts on health, social protection, and economic recovery measures, as well as infrastructure projects. The program disbursements for fiscal year 2021 also account for the extension of the validity of fiscal year 2020 General Appropriations Act until December 31, 2021, and the appropriations under Bayanian II until June 30 of this year. For next year, the deficit will be gradually lowered to 7.3% of GDP as the government continues to implement a fiscal consolidation strategy to rebuild its fiscal space and lessen the burden on borrowings and debt. While we can expect some updates on the medium-term fiscal program, to take into account macroeconomic development, our objectives will remain the same. We will sustain our fiscal consolidation strategy with a more calibrated spending for health and social programs, as well as for infrastructure and other recovery measures. 
to aid in our efforts for a sound public financial management. We are pushing several PFM reforms to promote fiscal discipline and faster service delivery, one of which is the cash budgeting system, or CBS. The CBS prescribes the time frame for obligation, implementation, and payment of completed projects to ensure actual delivery of services within the year to which it is budgeted. In 2018, the DBM prepared the first ever cash-based national budget for calendar year for fiscal year 2019. This is a landmark achievement in terms of putting in place the significant reforms in public financial management that will effectively address the need for expenditure control and budget administration, including such issues as absorptive capacity, fund utilization, and understanding. The year 2019 marked another milestone with the issuance of Executive Order Number 91, adopting the cash budgeting system beginning 2019 and for other purposes. Said EO provides that all approved appropriations, except statutory shares and financial subsidy to local government units, shall be made available for obligation and disbursement only until the end of the fiscal year. To institutionalize this reform and ensure the sustainability of its implementation, we are pushing for the passage of the Budget Modernization Bill. If enacted, these legislative measures will modernize the country's budgeting system by establishing holistic and internationally established principles encompassing the whole public financial management process public sector, and all PFM institutions resolve the fragmented legal framework on PFM and support the expansionary fiscal policy of the government for the country's economy. In summary, the Budget Modernization Bill aims for a past, for past PFM able to respond to the changing needs of time technology system and process rights, fiscal uh, discipline and efficient service delivery, automation of public financial management system, and ensure accountability across. Sound fiscal management of the government, transparency and increased public participation in the budget process. Another key PFM reform that we are pushing is the Budget Treasury and Management System, or BTMS, which will serve as the core of the government's financial management information system. In the time of the new normal, where physical transactions are more difficult, providing a legal framework for honoring transactions done through an information technology system is even more important. The BTMS, uh, aims to capture the reports on the actual obligations and disbursements on a timely and accurate basis to be able to guide our decision making, both in all the oversight PFM agencies as well as in other agencies. Since its implementation in 2017, the BTMS has been rolled out to 124 agencies or 41.61 of all national government agencies as of December 31, 2020. For fiscal year 2021, the target is to touch base with another 69 agencies. Aside from championing PFM reforms, we are also committed in promoting fiscal transparency. This is crucial as it helps foster government accountability and citizens' participation. As part of our transparency efforts, budget reports and utilization are posted on the DBM website. In fact, we even have a special section for COVID-19 releases on our website. 
we have released a total of 653.41 billion as of April 15, 2021 to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. The bulk of this amount or 387.17 billion was released under Bionian 1 while 259.78 billion was released under Bionian 2. Our efforts on budget transparency is recognized globally. In fact, in the 2019 Open Budget Survey, the Philippines was able to sustain its number one spot in Southeast Asia. The Philippines 2019 Open Budget Index score climbed to 76 out of 100 from 67 in 2017, surpassing the 2019 and 2029 OBI target scores of 67 and 71 respectively under the Philippine Development Plan. Our score is likewise higher than the global average score of 45 and the OBI scores of other Asian countries like Japan with 62 and uh, South Korea also with 62. As a founding member of the Open Government Partnership, an international platform to make governments more open, accountable, and responsive to their citizens, the Philippines is very much committed in providing avenues for public participation. Under the Duterte administration, we were able to co-create the Philippine Open Government Plan or program action plan for 2017 to 2019 with civil society after nine months of planning and consultations. Said action plan launched in August 2017 contains 12 commitments implemented by the national and local governments and civil society organizations. In 2019, the Philippine Open Government uh, Program launched its fifth and first gender inclusive national action plan. It contains 10 commitments, five of which will be co-implemented by the government and non-government stakeholders. However, in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the PHOGP made necessary revisions on the fifth national action plan commitments and made its respective milestone activities adaptive to the new normal. It relaunched its co-created TIF National Action Plan on December 2020. The Philippine Open Government Plan likewise conducted several Tagyao town hall meetings to provide avenues for citizens and government officials to interact and discuss local issues and recommendations. In 2020, with the restrictions in social uh, gathering, the town hall meetings were done virtually. Among the topics discussed were in social assistance, education, work, food security, vaccines, and the national ID. Backed by sound macroeconomic fundamentals and a government that is open and transparent, we are confident that we will recover and bounce back stronger this year and in the medium term. We are armed by a national budget that is entirely focused on addressing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have the support of Congress, which has been instrumental in passing the national budget on time and in legislating key measures that will support our recovery, the Bayanihan 1 and 2, the Corporate Recovery and Tax Incentives for Enterprises, OPA, and the Financial Institution Strategic Transfer, or FIS, to name a few. More importantly, we Filipinos are bonded together by the spirit of Bayaneha, more so in these crucial times. That, despite our differences in many aspects, we are united by our goal and aspiration to rise above this very difficult situation. Let us continue to pray. Well, we have a listening God. Let us do our best for God will do the rest. Let us work together for life to be much better. 
at tuloy tayong magkapit-bisik at sabay-sabay tayong bumangon at magsama-sama sa pagtulong. Pagkalain tayo ng poong may kapal, maraming salamat.